gradient meshes in Illustrator. So a gradient mesh is a transformation that's done to a basic object and it uses a gradients but in a more of an organic way. So we have two methods that we can create a mesh. We have a gradient mesh tool right here where I'm circling in my, my toolbox. We also have a create gradient mesh command that we find under the object menu. It's going to be grayed out right now, but here it is. So those are the two methods and each kind of has its purpose. So let's just look at what a mesh object is. I'm going to create just a simple circle. We're going to do this with a really basic shape to start with. Once you understand the concept, then you can apply this to more in-depth shapes. Um, I've seen it applied to characters, to um, illustrations of, of people. So it's really great. In fact, we have a um, illustrator. Um, his name is Russell Benfonti, who uses gradient meshes in a really fun way. So here is a circle, and I'm going to just put a solid fill color in it so you can see. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke. So I'm going to bring the stroke to the front and choose a stroke of none. So that way I just have a simple basic circle. So to apply a gradient mesh, um, I'm going to use probably the not preferred method first. Um, and, and this is not, you know, this isn't um, or effective maybe. Um, this is more effective using the gradient mesh tool. It's a better choice if you're just going to add, say, maybe a, just a highlight. Maybe I want to highlight this. Um, for in-depth meshes, it's better to use that create gradient mesh option that you find under the object menu. So when I do this, basically, uh, with this tool, I just click, and you can see how it perceives the three-dimensional shape will be, and it puts it, so if you, can, if you can understand this as being sort of popped out, projected out, as it would be a sphere. So when I do this, what I get are mesh lines, okay, so now I have um, some lines going through my circle, those are mesh lines. I have a mesh point, which actually, if you look, is a diamond. When I drag over it, it actually is an anchor point, but when it's not selected, it looks like a diamond. And this is the intersection of my mesh lines. I can assign a color to this point. I can add the more points by clicking. Um, I can delete points. I can move points. So it's very editable. Okay, so here we go. We can add, um, take it away by holding my Alt key down, and it's gone. And I can add it back. So those are points. And then what happens when I get um, a few in here, we'll add another point right there. Now I have these what seems to be little quadrants, and those are a mess, mesh patch. So the area between four mesh points is called a patch. So I have mesh lines, mesh points, and a mesh path patch. So it, what I can do then is apply color to those areas. And um, I'm going to utilize my direct selection tool because it, it's just like an anchor point. So I can actually bend this around. And you'll see this better if I put a color on it. So let's just put a uh, blue here. Oops, let's have it selected. Make sure that it's my fill that's in front. And let's put a blue here. So you can see how this just kind of fans out. If I deselect it, you can see what kind of an effect it, it happens, what, what it does. Um, now, key note here is that um, this is very memory intensive. You are going to have memory issues. Let me rephrase that. Your computer will have memory issues when you start playing with very complex mesh objects. So it actually is better to have a few simple mesh objects than one super complex, okay? And one more note, once I've created a mesh object, and I'm gonna show you, because I can put um, some colors on the edges here, which really creates sometimes a really cool effect to look like it's, it's coming across. Um, oops, oh, let's get that anchor point there. So you can see how it's pretty cool. Um, I can apply these to the edges um, as well. So you start mm, kind of just blending these colors together. 
Once I do create a mesh object, though, I can't convert it back. So you have to remember that, that you can't convert it back. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a delete on this. I'm gonna select it and actually, well, I just deleted a. Let's delete the whole thing. Let's go back now and I'll play with the star tool this time. So I hold shift down to make sure that I get it um, positioned correctly. Now let's do the um, create mesh with under the object menu. So object and I'm gonna create a gradient mesh. And this time I get a box that pops up. Again, click preview, always get in the habit of clicking preview. And what it's gonna do is put in a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. Maybe this was a little bit more complex to show you. Um, I'm gonna just go with four and four and click okay. Um, I'm gonna do one more off to the side so that you can see what happens here on a simple shape. So let's just make a simple box up here. And again, I'm gonna go under um, my object menu and I'm gonna do a create gradient mesh. There you go. So now you can see four rows, four columns. I can increase this so I can make only three columns if I want. So it's completely editable, okay? And I can actually go and intermix my gradient mesh tool with this if I wanna break this down into some more complex um, patches and um, lines and points. So if I click OK on this, you can then see that I have a basic. Now back to my, I'm gonna use my direct selection tool. So I can directly select an area here. If I direct a, if I click in a quadrant, um, I'm able to play with just that quadrant, which is really kind of fun sometimes. Um, this is gonna do something more unique here because I, all right. So you can see how um, fun this is to play with. Um, let's turn these back to yellow and if I just put it on my points you can get some interesting things going on. Now, um, and I can play with these, um, I, can, I can move this, I can play with my handles because these are just like an, an uh, anchor, a bezier path, so you can see that I'm able to do some really fun things with it, okay? Um, so that, that's kind of the fun way to play here. Um, you can also incorporate, I'm gonna delete, oops, let's get this all the way gone, delete it. Let's go back to just a simple object to show you one more item here. Um, I'm going to hold down my shift key and actually scale it so I can scale it. Now, if once you start getting some gradient meshes inside here, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to do the scaling. It's gonna get a little mad at you probably. So if I just click these points and do a mesh in here, okay, so that's kind of a fun little effect, but I can also click and I can apply transparency to some of these um, areas. So if I select one or more points, I just have this one point selected, and I find my transparency panel. If you don't know what the icon is, just go to window and look for transparency. Here it is towards the bottom. And what I can, I can do is play with my opacity slider. And you can see that now, it looks like it's just lightening up, but what really is happening, if I make a shape behind here, and I'm going to use my selection tool, do a right click on it, arrange, and send it all the way to the back. There you can see that I've got some transparency happening. So I'm seeing through this me mesh object, and you can see down here I didn't, it's just this little area right here that has some transparency. So you can make it look like it's a little cloudy window or frosted window or whatever effect you want. Okay, so that's the transparency. So a gradient mesh, you can do some really cool, fun things. Look for the link under resources that will take you to Russell Benfanti really fun characters, and if you look closely, you will identify that there are gradient meshes.